If you have lived, you have met a cancer patient. And if you have paid any attention, you have been bothered by cancer and all things involving the patient's disease and the ensuing compromised lifestyle. As from the moment the news are revealed to a cancer patient, hardship accompanies. Despite the fact that so many heroic spirits out there fight it so well and gracefully live a full life, from a medical perspective, living with a diseased body is certainly a challenge, and a debilitating one at that. Even the cancer types that are diagnosed routinely and early still pose difficulties for the patients and face limitations when it comes to treatment options, which is why the search for the cure and treatment optimization continues. And the good news is that we keep getting better at our treatment strategies and in our fight with cancer. On that positive note, I'm here to tell you about the fantastic work from our own Canadian research lab that has led to great improvements in the way we're able to remove tumors from breast cancer patients. The research I'm about to share with you is the result of the hard work of many talented and brilliant scientists, engineers, clinicians, trainees, and collaborators at Queen's University Perk Lab, Hotel Du Hospital, and Kingston General Hospital, where I recently f completed my postdoctoral fellowship. And I mainly worked on live tumor detection as part of the tumor removal procedure. But let me begin by describing how a typical breast tumor removal surgical operation called a lumpectomy runs. As you may be aware, when the cancer patient undergoes a tumor removal operation, the clinician has to open up the breast tissue and physically excise the tumor lump. What you may probably not know is that the surgery is done somewhat blindly in the operating room, traditionally. What I mean by this is that the surgeon has to localize the tumor tissue, which looks pretty much exactly like the rest of the breast tissue in the OR, based on the information she has gathered prior to the operation. So the various imaging modalities that the patients have undergone, such as MRI or X-ray images, will allow the surgeon to visualize the tumor mass prior to the operations. And on top of that, the radiologist usually further provides further instructions and details about the tumor position and size in the breast tissue in order to help orient the surgeon throughout the procedure. But this is similar to someone giving you the directions to a destination or providing detailed en route explanation really well, or maybe even giving you a hand-drawn map but without actually having any kind of a live map or feedback at hand when you begin to drive or while you're traveling. So ditching your Google map or typical car aids and navigation instructions all together. Of course, this means that there are extra challenges in finding your way to your destination while en route, or in the case of cancer surgery, in eliminating the tumor mass exactly or completely. And since the surgeon has to rely on the information prior to the operation to localize the tumor mass, there is room for error. And it is possible that he or she either misses some tumor, leading to residual breast tumor in the body, or that he will cut a very large healthy margin that will compromise cosmesis, or the look and aesthetics of the breast tissue. In fact, there's a 15 to 50% positive margin reported in association with breast tumor removal patients. Meaning, on average, in about 33% of the cases, there's tumor left over after the operation. Imagine, out of every two or three or four patients that undergo the surgery, one of them may end up with tumor residue in their body. Incomplete excision and residual tumor is a large enough concern that respectively leads to recall surgeries, or even in the worst case, total breast removal or mastectomies. And of course, this is problematic for several reasons. The patient's body will have to endure additional trauma and another invasive surgery. Having to wait for a second surgery further delays other adjuvant treatments for the patient. 
this is all very costly for the healthcare system. And if you have to remove too much or all of the breast tissue, as in the case of a mastectomy, it will also be a lifestyle negative to live with. Therefore, as you can appreciate, the need for additional assistance with surgical tumor removal and improving therapeutic results for the cancer patients persists, particularly approaches that are organ-preserving, while enhancing the accuracy of tumor removal itself are demanded. As I mentioned, our team of scientists and engineers at Queen's University Perk Lab have recognized this gap and devised a computer navigation strategy to help steer the oncological surgeons through the soft and deformable breast tissue in order to reach the tumor with much added confidence and accuracy using live feedback throughout the procedure. The strategy runs based on a computer navigation system and live ultrasound imaging. In other words, we've used a small computer coupled with ultrasound imaging to create a surgical GPS and a map for the clinicians to use. Now get ready to be completely amazed. For the actual tumor excision, the very basic tools and apparatus are the same traditional tumor removal surgical instruments enhanced with small tracking tools. The tracking tools serve to locate the position of the instruments with respect to the tumor, much like your GPS will locate your car as part of the whole navigation process. These tracking tools are small enough that will maintain an optimal workflow and continuously communicate the position information of the tumor and the tools back to the main computer and display this information on the computer screen for the surgeons to see. Because of the presence of these tools, together with the ultrasound, the surgeons can actually contour out the tumor throughout the procedure, and through the live interaction with a small, convenient, portable screen, the surgeon can plan out her surgical procedure based on the size and position information of the tumor. Because of the display screen, the surgeon can not only see the tumor live on the screen, but also her tools and the field and ensure that no tumor is left behind and know where she's cutting or that she's not violating a safe margin. This kind of 3D representation of the tumor originated based on her original contouring allows her to confidently follow her resection plans in cutting out the tumor lump. In essence, this much works much like your typical navigation system that identifies where you are in the world and helps you get where you need to go. To date, we have conducted expansive phantom studies and used our system in over 20 patients, inclusive of the feasibility studies. And we know firsthand that the surgical results have been significantly improved. Let me demonstrate this to you via a video. What we're going to see here is a clip from a clip from an actual surgical operation of a breast tumor where you can see the computer screen and the 3D representation of the tumor and the surgical tools and how the surgeons interact with the system to navigate through the tissue. What you may want to note here is how the tumor representation on the screen actually changes colors as the surgeon's cutting tools come close to the tumor. And in this way, it functions as a warning for the surgeon to maintain a safe margin. Well, if you liked what you saw, that's not all. What's more to come, you ask? We have developed other bells and whistles as effective ways to further optimize the dynamic nature of the navigation strategies for the, sur for the surgeons and the oncologists. For instance, when the clinician cuts into the tumor, not only can she see her tools and the tumor live on the screen and be warned the way you just saw in the video, but also we have other ways to remind her that she's too close or too far from the intended tissue much the same way that your navigation system will allow you to turn around if you've made a wrong turn and inform you. Color-coded lights mounted right at the tip of the surgical knife or the cauterizer, as well as sounds, will communicate proximity warnings to the surgeon. 
and let them know that they have deviated from her planned cutting route. With this kind of live information available at the tip of the cauterizer or the surgical knife, the surgeon doesn't even have to look up at the screen or change field of view. Rather, they can just stay focused at the tip of the cauterizer and work with added efficiency and accuracy. As well, one of our newest additions to the system is integrating live feedback available for the surgeons to see. Currently, our system is capable of using optical spectrometer to detect fluorescent pigments in the tumor and warn when these tumor pigments have been detected. But what we're working towards is integrating mass spectrometry in order to let the surgeon know, depending on the chemical composition, whether she's entered tumor or healthy tissue. <laughs> what does all this mean? This is basically akin to having a super navigation system that not only guides you to get to your destination, but will also alarm you should you get into a shady neighborhood or approach a dangerous cliff on your way. This kind of dynamic feedback will allow you to turn away from the danger zone and reroute. Similarly, surgeon's cutting knife will be enabled technologically so that they can inform the surgeon whether they're cutting into cancerous versus healthy tissue. Let me reiterate. The upcoming enhancements to the tools will allow the surgeon to both identify the tissue type and cut it out if need be, and in this way, optimize the tumor removal results while preserving maximum healthy tissue for the patient. The results? Well, the desired negative margin or no tumor left behind is much more likely to be achieved in this way. Now you may wonder if this system and strategy is readily available outside of our lab and hospital. Fortunately, yes. Everything I've just described can be replicated by other experts from across the world. Let me elaborate. One of the best features of, of, of our navigation system is that the operation is enabled in such efficient manner through open source free software available for download from anywhere in the world. I'll be more specific here. Our system functions based on three software components. Navigation is implemented through 3D Slicer, an open source medical image software that basically enables analysis and visualization of medical images. 3D Slicer can be enhanced by installing extensions from its app store, much similar in idea to downloading apps for your phone from the app store. Secondly, Slicer IGT is one such extension that's developed mostly by Queen's University Perk Lab. It contains custom modules for calibration and live visualization of the medical images. Basically, Slicer IGT serves to visualize the ultrasound images taken during the surgery and display position information of the surgical tools. Thirdly, PLUS is an open source software for data acquisition and pre-processing of medical image intervention. PLUS is also a product of our scientific efforts at Queen's University, which was originally primarily developed for ultrasound-based navigation strategies, but it currently contains all the essential functions for a whole host of other interventions. So the three software platforms that I just described, 3D Slicer, Slicer IGT, and Plus, may all be downloaded through open source free softwares online and run in conjunction with any other ultrasound machine and position trackers in order to assist with tumor removal surgeries. Finally, the hardware designs for the position tracking of the surgical devices presented today are also available as editable files online with a permissive license that allows free downloads. I mean, the entire navigation process and strategy in its completeness can be downloaded without programming to assist with surgical procedures anywhere in the world.
And on top of that, our staff engineers provide technical support continuously for free to help you utilize the system in your hospital or facility. And the open source nature of the platform itself allows its maximum growth exponentially because other users can also contribute to optimizing the software for medical applications. I mean, it is as humanitarian as it can get when using medical research to push the boundaries forward in providing optimal care for patients. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to tell you that this research works. What we used to envision as hope is now reality and can potentially become routine practice in no time. Thank you.